for problem number 11, I'd like to sketch a graph of the function f of x equals x to the fourth minus 6x squared. So again, we want to use the first derivative and the second derivative to give us information about this function, where it's increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down, where the max and mins are, where the inflection points are. So let's go ahead and take a first derivative and see what information we can get from the first derivative. So our first derivative of this function is going to be 4x cubed minus 12x. Now, we're interested in where this thing is equal to 0, so I can factor out a 4x. So f prime of x is equal to 4x times x squared uh, minus 3. In other words, this is equal to... 4x times x minus square root 3 times x plus square root 3. So my first order critical points would be at x is equal to negative root 3, 0, and root 3. Okay, so let's go over here to make a number line. Uh, let's label this f prime. And we want to put on our critical values onto this number line. Our critical points being minus root 3, uh, 0, and positive root 3. And now let's test some points in here and see if we get positives or negatives. Now remember, we're testing into the first derivative. And I really can use any one of these three as my first derivative, whichever works out best. This one looks pretty good to me. Uh, so let's say I take something that's smaller than root 3. Uh, how about negative 2, for example? So I plug in negative 2, and I get negative 2 times 4. That's certainly negative. And negative 2 squared is 4 minus 3. That's certainly positive. So positive times negative is negative. Okay, let's plug in something in between negative root 3 and 0. How about negative 1? If I plug in negative 1, I get a negative here, and I get negative 1 squared is 1 minus 3. That's a negative here. So a negative times a negative is a positive. So Now, remember that I always kind of just plug it in in my head to figure out if it's positive or negative. If that doesn't work well for you, don't do it actually plug in values and write it out and figure out if it's positive or negative by hand. Uh, if it's helpful to just do it in your head, do it in your head. But if you make a mistake up here, it kind of messes up the whole graph. So make sure you're doing it right before you write down something that's not quite right. Okay, let's take something in this interval. How about 1? If I plug in 1, I get a positive here and a negative here. So that's negative. And if I take something like 2, I get a positive here and a positive here, so that's positive. So I know that this thing is decreasing until it gets to minus root 3, then it's increasing until it gets to 0, then it's decreasing until it gets to root 3, then it's increasing on to infinity. Okay, so now that I've got the first derivative, now I'm ready to take a second derivative. I've got all the information I need here, so I can go ahead and erase and look at the second derivative. So the second derivative of this function would be 12x squared minus 12. Or if you prefer, this is 12 times x squared minus 1, or 12 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. All right, so uh, my second order critical points would be uh, just 1 and minus 1. x is equal to negative 1, 1. So I can go up here and I can make another number line, this time for f double prime. And on that number line, I want negative 1. And I want 1. All right.
right, so now let's uh, plug in values in each of these regions to see if I get positives or negatives. So if I plug in something over here, let's say negative 2. I plug in negative 2. This looks like as good a place as any to plug it in. Negative 2 squared is 4 minus 1 is 3. That's certainly positive. Let's plug in, let's say, 0. If I plug in 0 minus 1 times 12, that's certainly negative. And if I plug in something like 2, 2 squared is 4 minus 1 is 3 times 12 is positive. Okay, so positives mean that I'm concave up. Negatives mean I'm concave down. Positives mean I'm concave up. Now I think I'm about ready to graph this thing. What I also see here is right here at x equals minus root 3, I have an absolute minimum. At 0, I have, I'm sorry, not an absolute minimum, a local minimum. At 0, I have a local maximum. And at root 3, I have a local minimum. Okay, so let's start graphing this thing. Here's minus root 3. Here's uh, minus 1. Here's 1. Here's root 3. And it would be really great if I could plug these things into the original function and actually get some functional values out. So let's see, what's f of minus root 3? So it would be negative root 3 to the fourth minus 6 times negative root 3 squared. Can I do that? Well, minus root 3 to the fourth is 3 squared, which is 9. And this would be minus 6 times 3. So this is minus 18, so this is negative 9. So let's say that down here is minus 9, so I'd get a point right here. Now, I don't think that it would be any different if I looked at f of root 3, because everything is to the 4th and squared, so this is also negative 9, so I get a negative 9 right here. Okay. If I plug in 0, 0 is easy enough. Uh, because if I plug in f of 0, I get 0. So those are some good points to start with. And now let's draw in the rest. So if I'm moving from left to right, I, I'm moving along. I see that I'm going down, but I'm concave up. So I'm going down this way to get to this point, but I'm concave up. Then I keep on going, I'm still concave up, but now I start going up until I get to negative 1. So I start going up, and I'm concave up, but if somewhere in here I have a point of inflection, which changes my concavity, so now I'm still going up until I get to 0, but now I'm concave down. And once I get to 0, now between 0 and 1, I'm going down, and I'm concave down until I get to some point here. From 1 to root 3, I'm still going down, but I'm concave up. So the concavity changes. And finally, from root 3 to infinity, now I'm still concave up, but I'm going up. So my graph looks something like this.